come on in and pull up a chair and take a load off because today I will be reviewing and paging through Black Sword Hack from Livres de Lourdes. Is this an OSR role-playing game that's worthy of your attention or should you just smack the hack and leave it behind? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I am going to be reviewing the Black Sword Hack, or I should say it's Black Sword Hack. There's no the in the title in just a moment. But first, I do want to point out, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell because it will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this, it'll also tell you when my live stream airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, so... We will be taking a look at Black Sword Hack from Livres de Lourdes. It is written by Kobayashi. Artwork is provided by David Guile, I believe it might be pronounced. This book does clock in at 74 pages. You can get it in soft cover over at DriveThruRPG for $13. The PDF is also available for $5, or you can get both together for $14. Let's swing on over to the other camera here because here we've got Black Sword Hack. Well, I'm going to dive on in here, show you the artwork off the back of the, ga the game book as well. This is a, a minimal OSR role playing game. So, this is made with the Black Hack. So, if you're familiar with the Black Hack, then a lot of what you're going to see is going to certainly ring a bell. So, let's dive right on in. So first thing I'm going to point out is the soft cover is okay. The quality of the soft cover is all right. The cover's fine. The pages are kind of thin. So this is just this is just kind of a standard soft cover from uh, Drive Through RPG as far as print on demand as far as I understand. So we've got the rules. This is super rules light. Essentially, it is your you're mainly rolling a d20 and you are looking to succeed in tests. And the tests are based on your attributes normally. And a little different than like say, let's say 5E, because a one is actually a critical success, whereas a 20 is a critical failure in Black Sword Hack. We have advantage and disadvantage. We have a usage die, which those of you out there who are familiar with the Black Hack, know about the usage die. I'm a big fan of usage dice, where essentially what it is, if you've got a lot of something, you're not going to just track every, oh, okay, I, all right, get and mark one off, another one off, another one off. Say you've got a bunch of stuff, you might have a D12. And every time you use it, you're going to roll that D12. And if you roll a one, then you're going to drop down to the next size die. So a D10. Rolling that, next time you get a one, it's gonna go down to a D8. Really like that as well. We've got a Doom die, a Doom roll, which is similar to that, because this game setting is that of doomed protagonists, anti-heroes. It really is in the vein of Elric of Milna Bonnet, Michael Moorcock's Eternal Champion series. You've got Hawkmoon, you've got Corum. In fact, if I remember right, is Hawkmoon the only Eternal Champion that doesn't have like a, like a a sad end to his book series? I don't know. I know Jerry Cornelius is considered an Eternal Champion, but I always looked at that as more science fiction than anything else. 
initiative, super easy. You're rolling a wisdom test. If you pass, then you're going to go before your opponent, your enemies. And if you fail, you're going to go after your enemies. You can have a critical success, which is kind of cool because you'll get an extra action because you're allowed two actions in your turn. If you have a critical failure, you'll only get one action. I talked about what you can do. Got some armor, two-handed weapons. Two-handed weapons actually give advantage to their damage. And we've got uh, recovery as well. The Doom Die is pretty interesting because if you if you run out, your Doom Die runs out, and there's different times that you're gonna roll it. You're gonna everything's gonna be at disadvantage until you take a long rest. So I thought that's kind of cool. Character creation, we do not have classes. We have kind of like background. So it talks about the attributes. So pretty standard, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. They're, you know, they're the big six. Talking about rolling your attributes. So the highest you can actually start off with in this game is 13. But you can, as you get experience, you can increase your attributes. So we get birth, origins, we've got barbarian, civilized, and decadent. And you get to actually pick some backgrounds from these as well. So uh, for an example, if you're decadent, then you're gonna choose, you'll get three backgrounds and two of them have to be from your list. So, right, so if you're decadent, you're gonna take two of these and you could take one of these other ones. They're just cool little extras to the characters. They aren't feats or anything like that. Like you would, you would think like say 5E or Pathfinder. So as you can see, we're talking, these, these chapters are super short. In fact, the character generation chapter is like one of the longest. So watch, we'll get into equipment, cost of living, talking about poisons and drugs, treasures, weapons, weapon effects, armors and shields. One of the cool aspects with Black Sword Hack is you can attack, you can also parry. So if you have something or like block and attack, so if you have something, say, like a, a shield, or if you've got, say, another weapon in, a, in, a, in another hand that you're using to uh, parry, you can utilize that. If you're using a two-handed weapon, though, you're out of luck. So get experience. As I mentioned, it's going to talk about the different levels. You can go up to level 10, the highest level that they've got in the game, as you gain your experience. It, and it's essentially it's stories. How many adventures you go on is what's going to going to bump you up in level. There's no experience points or anything like that. We also have gifts, which are kind of cool. So we have chaos and law, straight out of Elric and Melna Bonet. I mean, I don't I don't mean this is out straight out. I'm talking chaos and law, right? That's that's kind of where D and D got that from as well. And we got some dark pacts. So you can have demons, you have spirit alliances. We got a short section on spells. I gotta say, I like the black hack style of providing spells. Just tells you, okay, this is what this does. Boom, this is what it does. This is what it does. Yes, I know there are a lot of people out there, they love to know, okay, well, you know, so do I have to speak to cast a spell? Do I have to move my hands? Do I have to have, what's my range? And all the, I like, the minimal approach to fantasy role-playing rules because it, it frees up so much stuff at the table. You can, you can get more adventure in, in my opinion, during a session when you're using more minimal rules. All right, so then we've got different rune weapons. Stormbringer, anyone? Or Moonblade? Creating your world. There's a little bit of info about trying to create a cool background world. There is a background setting. Heimdallur. I don't know. Just, just taking a stab at the pronunciation. Ports of the North. So we got a few pages about this. We also even have a short introductory adventure in the book. We've got a bestiary. Here, I kind of wish there had been a little bit of artwork for these, 
but that's the one aspect in a bestiary. I like to have images of the different creatures, monsters, things like that. I mean, do, do I really need to see artwork of skeletons? No, but maybe I would need some artwork for hollow monks or ghost legionnaires. All right, and then we get into the short adventure. It's kind of scene-based as far as what's going on in the adventure. It's only a few pages. Actually, it's kind of cool. So there we go, running through that. And then we have an appendix with ships. Just a few pages talking about ships. I thought that was kind of, kind of strange how it's just kind of thrown in there. Ships, there's no... It's not like, okay, let's talk about overland travel or anything like that, but here's some ships. Information about ships, travel, combat, boarding actions. All right, get a glossary, and then we'll get a character sheet. There you go. There you have it. And that is Black Sword Hack. Let's swing on over to the other camera. I will share my final thoughts, give this a review score. As I mentioned, I like the Black Hack. It's It's been a while since I've read it. So it's probably been a couple of years. Last time I read the Black Hack is when the second edition came out. And that's what this utilizes. This actually builds off of the second edition of the Black Hack. So I like the minimal approach. I like the usage die. And yes, I know Gary Gygax said, you know, you gotta track time. You gotta track resources. Otherwise, don't even bother playing, right? Might as well go play Candyland or something. And I get that. I understand that. The usage die does that, and it takes that whole sitting there and, you know, ah, can, yeah, right, man, carry the one. All right, hang on. Yeah, man. So I like that. I, I like the approach. I like the minimal OSR. Although I, I understand some people look at the black hack as new SR. I still look at it as OSR. So what do I think of Black Sword Hack? I like it. I think it, I think it's cool. If you like the Black Hack and you are looking to run a role-playing game that's really heavily flavored by, say, the works of Michael Moorcock or, what was it, uh, the Kane books, Edward Wagner. Wasn't that who did the Kane books back in the day? Another anti-hero, different kind of anti-hero characters in a fantasy setting, then I would say, give this a peek. It's not a lot of crunch in here. So if you're somebody who likes to have tons of crunch and a lot of fluff as well, a lot of background setting info and, and things like that, you won't encounter that in Black Sword Hack. As far as the book itself, eh. I mean, it's not gonna fall apart. But I can't see, and this is this has nothing to do with the author, right? This has nothing to do with Kobayashi or Livres de Lourdes, which I think I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know. Has has nothing to do with them. It's just the print on demand. The quality is like it's okay. So, as far as a Review score. This this is how I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it. As far as this soft cover, right? What I have right here, I give Black Sword Hack a 7.5 out of 10. That's the official review score because that's the product that I have that I'm reviewing. You might consider picking up the PDF. And like I said, I'm not trying to talk you out of getting the book. It's just it didn't blow me away as far as a soft cover book. It's not terrible. It's just not fantastic either. It's kind of meh. If you're only going to get the PDF, I would probably bump this up another point. So if you were just picking up the PDF, I'd give it like 8.5. But the official review score for Black Sword Hack is 7.5 out of 10. So I still recommend it. I still think it's good. It's just the, the quality of the paperback, soft cover, Kind of dings it a little bit, just a little bit. All right, that is it for my review. Once again, let me remind you, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. 
subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you subscribe, ding that bell. Because not only will it let you know when I upload videos such as this, I'll also tell you when my live stream airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. All right. Of course, as I wrap up all my videos right now during this never-ending pandemic, let me once again hope that all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, click right here to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to check out a recent episode of the live show, click up here or roll the dice and see what YouTube recommends by clicking right here. And of course, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks for watching. And gang, please wear masks and stay safe.